Hi, welcome back to Linux. Today we're looking at Linux backups, cron, and scripting. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and it might be pretty easy too. Okay, let's get started. Over here we've got this uh, regular terminal. We're going to access Web01. So if you haven't powered that on, go ahead and power on Web01 or use any Unix Linux box that you want to use. This will work on pretty much anything. But if you want to connect to Web01, you'll do it SSH student at 192.168.56.51. If you haven't powered that on, <laughs> power it on now. Um, great, now that I'm in, you can see I just logged into it. I'm gonna go ahead and become root. So I'm gonna sudo dash s. I'm now root on Web01. I have my base requirements. Uh, re well, okay, now that I said that, SSH student at 192.168.56.51. That thing, that works on Windows 10, that works on Mac OS 10, and it works on Linux and Unix boxes. You can type that from anything. It, it works. You can just bring up a terminal and type that. You don't need PuTTY to use. If you want PuTTY, PuTTY is a fantastic tool. I love PuTTY. But um, you don't need PuTTY to do that. You just type SSH straight from the command prompt in Windows. If you didn't know that, then there you go. So here we go. Now let's go ahead and first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a backup. What are we going to back up? Well, we're going to back up our var www HTML directory where we have customer websites. You can see we have customer websites 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Customer WordPress 01, we have some stuff on there. You should have WordPress on there and index, some things like that. And we want to back up our Etsy directory, which is just, you know, huge, full of a bunch of files inside of Etsy. And we're also going to back up our logs. So var log, and we're just going to get Apache logs. So there we go. So this is going to be an Apache backup script. The idea of this is that we want to back up all of our Apache stuff. Now, Etsy is just a good idea to back up all of Etsy all the time. There could be some crypto keys or other things in there that just be aware that if you are backing up crypto keys, don't let your backups go to an unsecured location because then someone can unzip your backup and have access to your keys. Can you encrypt backups? Yes, you can encrypt backups, ha, but we're not going to. So let's go ahead and move on over and do our first backup. We're going to encounter a problem here to start out with. So I'm going over the opt directory. You can see my opt directory is empty. The first problem I'm going to have is I want to back up a whole bunch of stuff, but where do I put it? So tape archive, tar is what I'm going to use. I'm going to create, I'm going to be uh, verbose about it because I want it to show me everything when I do it with the command line. I'm going to zip things. I'm going to create a file, but I don't have a backups directory in opt. So I just put backup.tar.gz. I can do that. We'll try it. And then what do I want to back up? Etsy, var, www, html. Yeah, that, that's that's good. I'll just do var, www. And I'll get var log. And uh, I'll just get var log. That's fine. Maybe you're running nginx. So. Okay, so you got that, you press enter and it will back up everything. So we've got our WordPress sites and all of our logs and everything else, and it's all backed up. So if we look at that, we now have backup.tar.gz. It's a full backup, we can restore this now, it'll, it'll restore over everything. There are a gazillion options to tar, so if you wanna look that up, look up tar, do a tar dash dash help, or go ahead and do a man tar. And when I say there are a gazillion options with tar, I am serious. There are like a gazillion options with tar. It will scroll on for pages. There are books on tar. <laughs> so if you're thinking, can tar do that? Yes. Yes, it can. Okay, let's move on. So over here, I did this tar, but that's not very descriptive. You know, I should put the date in there. Well, let's do that. So I'm going to delete this backup, and then I go back in tar, and I want to put the date in there. So I'm going to say this is a daily backup daily dash and the date is 2020 04 04 uh let's see uh what time it is 22 and i don't know my my clock thinks it's 2201 uh, we'll just say something like that i'll do that create that and you'll see my file in a second let's look at that so now i've got this backup and okay so that's a little more that's a little more useful but I'll have to type that every time manually. Is there a way to get the dates and times to come up? Yes, there is. So it is date. Wait, that does not look right. So 
Linux date is another utility that has a whole bunch of options with formatting. Well, let's go ahead and look into that. So date, we'll do a plus percent. I know, it's like, why do you do a plus percent? It's well, because I do. There you go. Uh, so we got date plus percent Y, you got that 2020 there. And then we'll go over and go ahead and do a percent M, percent D, and look at that. Now we've got 2020-04-23, because today it thinks it is now midnight 48. So it thinks it is 0, 0, 100 hours, 0, 100 hours, 48 minutes. <sighs> so there you go. Whatever, my clock's off, don't worry about it. So over here we got date, we have the year, month, and day, and I can actually put a dot in there, and I can put a percent H and a percent M for hour and minute. That's pretty cool. I can make that into a variable, var date equals back tick, back tick or grave mark. It's the, it's like a single quote, but it's the one that's next to your number one key beneath the tilde. So if you look at number one key and you press shift that, that's tilde, that is back tick. So if I do this and set that var date like that, press enter, and then I type echo dollar sign var date, look at that. Now it will always give me the right date. So it will always tell me what the proper time is. I can now do a backup. Well, so I said we're going to do backups, cron, and we're going to create a script. Well, I know how to set the var date now, but I'm going to need to script this because I can't just leave this running on my console. Well, I guess I could. It's just as soon as I logged out, my backup would stop and my var date variable would disappear. That wouldn't be very good. How do I do that? Well, vi etsy cron tab. This is where we're going to keep our chronological, this is a chronological table. This is where you schedule things inside of a Linux or a Unix system. Yes, there are cron daily, cron hourly, etc. There are another other cron folders and there are user cron folders. We're not getting into that today. If you want to look it up, I encourage you to. Uh, but this is the main Etsy cron tab folder. So let's look at this. Over here, we've got the M, which is the minute, H, hour, day of month, month, day of week, the user in the command. Well, we're gonna need a command here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this out. I'm gonna say, okay, I'll put this over here. And uh, remember that O for open a new line or I for insert. I'm gonna say, let's do this. At what time do I wanna do this? At what minute? We'll say at zero, minute zero of what hour? I'm gonna say at 0300. So you can just put an 03 or just put a three, either way. Every day of the month, every month. And then for this, I'll make this a daily backup. So I'm gonna say this goes one through six and it's gonna be running root and I need something to run here. This is, what do I run? I need a script. So this is the scripting part. Now over there, I can tell it to tar. I can tell it to go through and tar, um, not X, Z, we'll do a create, um, don't be verbose, zip and create a file, backup, whatever. We'll tell it to put in the op directory, op directory, etc. But that's just not gonna help. That is not what we wanna do. So not even go down that road. We need a script to put right here. So we've done a backup, it's in our directory. It's directly in the op directory. We're gonna to need to get organized. So let's go ahead and make a directory called backups. Now we've got the directory backups. Let's go ahead and move our daily over into backups. There we go. Now let's create a script. We're gonna do a vi sys, and I'll call this backup underscore daily dot sh. Now very top, shebang, bin bash, we've got that. And we'll call this a backup script. Well, it's an Apache backup script. Apache backup script. Apache is going to be using three folders by default. That's going to be your Etsy Apache, Etsy Apache 2, uh, the var www directory and var log Apache 2. So those are the three directories that by default you're going to need to have those. And that's outside of the executable, uh, the executables that you use for Apache, outside of the initialization scripts you use for Apache and outside the libraries that you use for Apache. But those are the three areas that you need to back up that are you dependent. That means you are actually modifying those. You're gonna modify the Apache config at some point. You're gonna put things in the web server directory at some point and the logs are gonna be updated because of traffic. And that's, uh, that's just something that you need to be concerned with. All right, so now we got the Apache backup script. So let's go ahead and Let's make our var date. So we got here var 
date equals. And we're gonna go ahead and hit that back tick there and type date. And plus, don't worry if you can't remember this, go look it up somewhere. I've done this so many times that when I type this stuff in, it is uh, kind of uh, like second nature. So we have the, the year, month, day, and yes, I know the lowercase m is month and the lowercase d is day. And then the uh, capital H is hour and capital M is minute. There you go, we have set up our var date. Now let's go ahead and create a backup script that will back up and put that date in there. Pretty cool. So tar C, don't put a V in there, no V this time, because we don't want a whole bunch of files scrolling up our screen. Tar CZF, and then we're going to tell it what to back, uh, what file we're creating. We're gonna do opt, opt, and backups slash. Okay, opt backups, and we're gonna to need to name that file. So we're gonna put the dollar sign there for var date, if we wanna put it like that, Hmm, you know what would be neat? Let's put the word daily in front. So we'll put daily like this, hyphen vardate.tar.gz. Now let's tell it what to back up. We want to back up Etsy, we want to back up var dub dub dub, and we want to back up var log. And you know what? I'll just do var log Apache 2. There we go. Those are the three directories I'm backing up the Etsy, var dub dub dub, and var log Apache 2. Over there. Note that I did put the word daily in this one. So let's go ahead and Close that out. Now I've got that. I'm going to chmod. Chmod makes it executable. 775. Sys backup daily. Look at it. Fantastic. I'm going to run it and make sure it runs without an issue. It looks like it ran. Let me look in backups and see. And sure enough, if you look at that, we've got the new file that was just created right now. It's 13 meg because I'm not grabbing the entire var directory, var log directory. Uh, back up what you need to back up. So over the, uh, when you're considering backups, you need to consider the frequency of your backup, where you're storing your backup, if you have sensitive information in your backup, and how you're gonna restore that information in the future. TAR, or Tape Archive, or TAR, or Linux Unix TAR, is a wonderful utility. It will always be restorable. It's kind of like just zipping stuff every time. It also gives you a lot of features like incremental and differential and things like that, but don't worry about that in this video. If you wanna check it out, I encourage you to look into it. Now, moving back over with the, uh, the backup that we've created, we've got this daily. Let's go ahead and VI, Etsy, cron tab, and let's throw that in there. So at 3 a.m., we're gonna run this file. So we got, I'm gonna delete the tar, not right there, don't need that. There, I'm gonna do opt, and we called it sysbackupdaily.sh. Look at that. So now if I just, Leave that like that, it will run forever uh, running OpSys backup daily. And that will run out of disk space. So if you're if you're recording backups to your own drive, which is uh, not necessarily a bad thing to record backups on your own drive, you may want to keep just daily backups on the server drive and also over on a remote location. That allows someone to pop into the web server who may not have access to the backup server and they can restore some files that they need to, it's one of your web admins or something of that sort, or you can get into it and restore files that you need to restore. That's not a bad idea. But storing the information on the server for a long period of time as your sole source of backup is a bad idea. So, um, you know, the hard drive fails in your server and you've lost all your backups as well. So, not a good idea there. So. Work it out, see what the best routine is for you, when the best time to back things up would be, how long you wanna keep these. Think about the rule of thumb that I use is you'll need 20 times the amount of storage as that you actually back up. So if you're backing up one terabyte, you're gonna need 20 terabytes of storage for uh, keeping your backups for a year. So that's just a rule of th th thumb, just that 20 times. So let's move on and uh, carry on with this. So I got this daily backup. I would really like to create one that's a, a weekly backup. Let's do that too. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna put those back in, copy this thing, and I'm gonna say every week, so that's one through six. Well, on day seven, right over here, this is gonna run sys backup, and I'm gonna call this weekly. Now the only, normally, I would do this another way, but this is extremely easy to understand and it's very straightforward. So I'm gonna do it this way for this video. There are an unlimited number of ways you can do this. I encourage you to do the way that 
works best for you. So I just create backup weekly. Now that I've made backup weekly, over here I don't have a backup weekly, so let me copy that sys backup daily to sys backup weekly. Do you see what I just did right there? I copied my daily backup and I just named it weekly. Now I need to go into that, so sys backup weekly. I need to change this where it says daily. I just need to change that to weekly. Like that. There you go. Now I've got the, the name all right. Everything's going to work great. Now, if you don't have a path specified in your cron tab, or if you're wondering what your path is, and you're like, oh no, things will fail, then you can look for your path, and you can look for uh, tar, which is which tar, like right over there. And then over here, you could type slash bin tar. I'm going to leave it like that and leave the other one without it, because it does not matter. Bin is in my path in every instance, so I don't have to worry about worrying about it not understand what tar is. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. So now I've got my weekly and my daily backups. Both of those will run. So if I run sys backup weekly, right now it will run. It will name it weekly instead of daily. Let's look in backups. And you can see now we've got our dailies there and we have our weekly here. Now let's go back over to cron tab. We're going to cat the cron tab. Oops. Cat Etsy cron tab. And right there you can see that we've got both of those will occur at 3 a.m. This one will happen Monday through Saturday. This one's going to happen on Sunday. That's the daily backup and the weekly backup go right there. Of course, you may want to differentiate the number of files or the types of files that you back up on a daily backup or a weekly backup. Or you may want to have a full backup and a partial backup, things like that. I would recommend that you use rsync to sync your backups over to a remote location then you can do a little checksum on rsync and that way you'll always be sure that you've got the correct backup copied over or just back up to an nfs mount you can do that or you can actually tar allows you to send things to your prompt or over netcat or over the network directly you could do that as well i hope that this has been helpful and i really look forward to talking to you again in the future